cataracts are caused when proteins inside the lens of the eye clog together. It's a condition that clouds the vision of approximately 180 million people worldwide, with surgery to replace the lens with a plastic one currently the only solution. 20 million sufferers around the world are blind because they can't access surgical treatments. But help could be on the way, as a potential non-surgical treatment method has been described in the journal Science this week. It follows another advancement in cataract science published recently in Nature. Roy Quinlan from the University of Durham, whose Perspectives article on the subject has been published alongside the research paper, talks to Rosalind Davis about how important these new findings could be. This paper shows that cataract is reversible in their animal models, and that's important. It's doubly important when you take it in conjunction with the paper that was published in Nature by Zhao et al., which showed similar results in a dog model that you could reverse cataract by eye drops containing these small molecules, cholesterol-based lipids, that actually then can help reverse that cataract. So how do they reverse the cataract? The mechanistic detail is um, sadly missing at this present moment in time. In the paper, they presented some evidence to suggest how it might work. And in this case, it's that these small molecules bind to a class of proteins called protein chaperones, which are there to help maintain the lens proteins in a good state. When they get compromised, they don't work as well, and the proteins aggregate, and then they scatter light. And they showed that these small molecules bind to the protein chaperones and stabilize those protein chaperones. And we are left to conclude that that stabilization is a novel mechanism to actually treat cataract. And the two different papers, Yes. are the chemicals that they use very similar to one another? Yes, they are. And that brings in the other really quite exciting aspect to these scientific discoveries, because they used completely different approaches. One said, OK, we'll go and look for small molecules. And out of that dropped a series of molecules related to cholesterol. The Zhao paper had a family with an inherited cataract. They determined the gene that was involved, and lo and behold, it was lanosterol. Lanosterol is one of the precursors to cholesterol, and they just took the observation that lanosterol was limited, and when they put lanosterol back in drops in the eyes of dogs over a six-week period, visibly improved the transparency of the lenses in those animals. And that's remarkable to me because it shows that this situation is not an end point. So what's the barrier to applying this technology in human medicine? As always, it's money, it's excitement, it's engagement, it's getting people motivated to actually do something that will nail this particular connection. If we can develop something which can help prevent or reverse or treat cataract, then that is a really remarkable breakthrough. And we don't have to rely on surgery. We don't then have to think about the socioeconomic issues. We can roll that out across the world. There's another condition that we all suffer from, which is presbyopia, which is where the lens hardens as we get old. And that is thought to be the first sign of age-related cataract. So again, it may be that these small molecules will actually be able to influence that, and that genuinely does affect everybody on the planet. Roy Quinlan from Durham University, discussing research published this week in Science.